All right, let's open this thing up. Whoa, that was not what I was expecting. One year ago, I filled this jar with some water and dirt from a nearby river. Along with the water and dirt, I also added some plants and other tiny creatures, including this snail, just to keep things interesting. And then I sealed it. I sealed it tight. And this jar has sat on a shelf underneath an artificial light for over 365 days, still full of life inside, but without even a whiff of fresh air from the outside world. Until today. Today, we're going to open this jar. What does it smell like inside? Has it built up so much pressure at the top will come flying open? What does it look like inside? Those are the questions I'm asking myself. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you skip to the end of this video just to get to that part. We're going to do it in just a minute or two. But I think it's important we understand what this jar has been up to over the past year. Amazingly, in the absence of any fresh air, many different tiny inhabitants have survived in this claustrophobic environment. The aforementioned snail, technically a bladder snail, is the largest and most visible of the animal species. There's actually two bladder snails visible inside. These small creatures here are called ostracods. They're... The ostracods are one of... Hang on, guys. Hey, can you keep it down? Put on some headphones or something? Ugh. These small worms, always causing a racket with their dance music, are known as tubifex worms. They're often actually referred to as boogie worms uh, in this community for obvious reasons. They spend their days dancing at the bottom of the star. It may look like they're dancing like this in order to catch prey or drifting food particles, but actually their head and mouth are buried in the substrate. The waving part is actually its tail. They wave their tails like this because they breathe through their skin, not unlike an amphibian. And with all this extra movement, their densely vascularized tails, rich with blood that you can actually see pumping back and forth in this shot, super cool, more easily absorbs oxygen from the surrounding water when it's waving back and forth like that, making the tube effects worms able to withstand harsh, low oxygen environments such as this jar. Also inside are two tiny invertebrates, ostracods and daphnia. Other, even tinier invertebrates also call this jar their home, though they are nearly invisible even with this level of magnification. And finally, we have the lifeblood of this jar, the plants. Oh, sorry, what's that? Oh, okay, um, I'm being informed by my manager that you're all just waiting for me to get to the part where we open up the jar. Okay, okay, say no more, let's get to it. All right, moment we've all been waiting for. Let's uh, move this latch out of the way. Careful to not let it pop open. Oh, wow, that's... Oh, that was not what I was expecting. I was expecting this to like build up pressure and want to pop open, but I think there was I think that noise was like a like a sucking noise, like there was negative pressure there, if anything. That's crazy. And I'm I'm trying to think in my mind already like what was the process inside this jar to cause it to be at such a low pressure? Let me know in the comment section why you think a low instead of a high pressure had formed in this jar. There's this layer of, of brown gunk on the surface and, oh, the smell, it's, that's not at all the smell I was expecting. It's not all sulfury like, like in a swamp, not at all like rotten eggs. It's a bit, I don't know, earthy, but also it smells like boiled vegetables, like some smell from my distant childhood past that uh, some vegetable I haven't eaten in years. I don't know, boiled okra? But I never ate that as a kid. Cooked zucchini? Oh, I can't quite place it. It's not an awful smell. Not a smell I'd want to smell all the time, but it's not awful. Let's uh, see what else we can find inside. I'm not positive uh, what this is right here, but I have a hunch that it's snail eggs. 
the, the lighting doesn't do it justice, but it's actually sort of transparent. That's what makes me say that. And right here on the rim of the jar is another bladder snail. That's the third one in here. Over on the seal on the top of the jar is a tiny shell of another snail that appears to have died at some point. Here's a thumbtack for scale. When I say tiny, I mean tiny. Along the top of the jar, you can also see a bit of a plant. Well, actually, two plant species that have been sort of strangled by the algae. The algae, uh, along with these plants, are sort of the lifeblood of this environment. With the top being sealed for over a year, there's no way that animals could survive on their own. They needed these plants. The plants are responsible for producing oxygen for the other inhabitants inside, along with getting rid of carbon dioxide. And also, and, and this one is sort of underappreciated, whether in the broader uh, space of, of our entire planet, but also in these closed ecosystems, they also have the underappreciated role of creating like nutrients and, and converting light, artificial light or sunlight, into energy for other inhabitants here on Earth or other inhabitants here in this jar. I'm talking about glucose, are there other carbohydrates, in some cases fats, uh, cellulose, which is what a lot of, of creatures um, live off of in terms of energy. Super interesting. And, you know, there's no way life on Earth would be able to survive at scale without plants and the role that they play. So the next time you're outside, think of plant. This jar has undergone many changes over the past year. At times, the glass was too dirty to even see inside. Even in just the last few days since I've been messing around with it to film this video, I've noticed quite a few changes inside, as though I've been like interrupting the, the equilibrium that had formed. Eventually, over time, period of months and years, some of the larger inhabitants are likely to die out and, and go extinct inside of this jar. Many already have. When this jar was created, there were several other larger animal species, such as aquatic isopods, amphipods, and probably more. I honestly can't remember. It's been over a year. But now we're down to the bladder snails, the tubifex worms, the ostracods, and the copepods, along with the plant species, and other tinier invertebrates that we can't see very well, even with this lens. Once upon a time, springtails also lived inside this jar. They're not technically an aquatic insect, they had to survive above the waterline, but probably did so for many weeks or months before they finally died out. What's a springtail? Well, here's one on the screen inside of a closed terrarium, which is the land-based equivalent of a closed aquatic ecosystem. Same concept, except without as much water. Want to learn more about that? Check out this video on the screen to hear more about my largest terrarium's recent near-death experience.